Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com, and today we're going to do an overview of Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich. Okay, so let's go through uh, the whole new system kind of systematically. Uh, first up, we have the new lock screen. So first off, you have the ability to disable the lock screen completely, or if we go into settings, security, screen lock. We all have we have all of these different options. Slide is essentially this. Brings up this new little sliding mechanism. If you pull it to the right, it unlocks the device. If you pull it to the left, it launches the camera. Besides the new slide, we also have the old pattern, pin, and password, which you're probably familiar with, but real quick. Pattern is you basically draw a pattern within nine boxes that unlocks the device. Uh, pin is a four digit or longer pin number to unlock the device. And password is literally a word or characters uh, that you choose to unlock the device. Now, the new one on here uh, that everybody is kind of excited about is face unlock. Now this uses the frontward facing camera on the device to essentially scan your face, pinpoint spots on it, how far your eyes are apart, your mouth, etc. And it uses that uh, as face, facial recognition to unlock the device next time you look at it. So, we'll show you it getting set up. Okay, so to set it up, basically put your head in this little box, circle thing. And it says, face captured. We hit continue. Uh, now, if it can't see your face, it does require some type of pin or pattern in order to unlock the device. And there's a reason for this because it's not always the best at figuring out your face. So quickly, let's put in a pin. And now we can test it out. And there you go. Next up, we have the new launcher, which has apps and widgets in the same place. Tap that to get over to widgets. Tap that to get to apps. Uh, also, they upgrade the UI a little bit. They have like zooms in uh, from behind like that to widgets. Okay, now from the app drawer, there is a new little feature. Uh, you can hold down on an app like this. And normally you could then put it on a home screen, uh, wherever you want it, whatever. But now you can also uh, drag it up to the top here. Hold on, do that again. Drag it up to the top here and let go to uninstall it. It'll say, application should be installed, you click OK. Uninstallation finished, OK again. Moving on to the notifications. The notification bar uh, now allows you to swipe to get rid of notifications. And also has this shortcut up here at the very top to get to settings, uh, the settings for the device itself. This is pretty handy when you're, say, in an app and need to get to settings for some reason. Okay, next up is the home screen. There are five home screens and a universal search bar up here at the top, which you'll notice that kind of stays with you regardless of what home screen you're on. Tapping that allows you to search for any apps, contacts, or search the web. You can also use voice search in that as well. Uh, apps can now be organized into these folders, which are kind of cool. And I'll show you how you do that. So if you take things out of it. In order to create a folder, all you have to do is simply hold down on any app, drag it on top of another app, and there you go. You can also tap this and tap in there to name it something. Okay, besides that, uh, widgets, which are added to the device by clicking on the app drawer now and clicking on widgets, uh, hold down on something and pull it out. Uh, these widgets can now also be resized. So if you hold down on something, you'll see these little dots show up and now I can pull it wider, skinnier, whatever I want, and then just click anywhere else 
uh, and that sets the widget at that size. To get rid of things, normally you would hold this down and drag it down to the bottom. Uh, in this version, it is now, uh, the trash can is now at the top. So dragging anything up to that trash can at the top gets rid of it off the screen. You'll notice this little shortcut bar that floats along with me as I swipe through the home screens. Uh, this can now also be customized natively. So if you pull anything out of it, you can replace that with anything. You can also create folders in here too same way that you do normally uh, and take things back out etc and next up we have multitasking uh, so basically these buttons down here at the bottom that are always present uh, no matter what screen I'm on uh, the far right one if we tap it brings up our latest apps uh, and shows them in this neat little thumbnail view with the screen set on the last screen you left the app in in addition to that, uh, instead of having six or eight or however many uh, old versions of Android had, you can actually have 18 apps all open at the same time. Uh, you can also, if you want to close an app, easily swipe it out of it, and that closes it for you. Okay, some of the stock apps have been replaced, one of them being the phone. What you can do is now, when people are calling you, you can pull this up to ignore them with a text message, either a custom one or one of the preset ones. So that sends that off to them. Next, uh, there's the new messaging application, uh, which is essentially the same thing as the old one. The only difference here is cosmetic changes. It is a lot cleaner looking. Uh, people's contact uh, pictures shows up here, also shows up uh, within the actual messaging thread, which is nice. Um, and that's about it. Also, the email, whether it's this email or your Gmail, is essentially the same thing. Uh, just cosmetic changes for the most part, but it does look a lot nicer and there's a nice feel to it. This looks to me more like the way my Gmail looks on Chrome on my desktop. Uh, which is a nice change. I like it. Other than that, let's move on to the calendar. The calendar is a lot nicer looking as well, um, especially when you change it to month. It's very crisp and clean uh, and shows all of your calendar information uh, pretty clearly and it's pretty easy to read. Okay, next up is Maps, uh, which Again, not too many features have been added to this, but cosmetically it looks a little cleaner. Um, your options are all down here. Uh, and again, things just look cleaner, more polished, uh, which is kind of a constant theme throughout all the apps in uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. Other than that, we have People. Uh, and People, again, mainly cosmetic changes. You do have all of the people in your contacts. It's much cleaner looking can pull up and down on this, which you could do before. Search. Uh, you also have your favorites over here to the right uh, with a giant picture of them. Uh, it also syncs with your Facebook, your Twitter, and it can bring status updates into the contacts themselves. So you can see all those things in one place. You can also go over here and take a look at your groups. Uh, if you want to just see certain people within certain groups, which I don't believe was as easy to get to in the old version of Android, uh, if it even existed. After that, we have new versions of text input. So we do have our keyboard, it looks very similar to the gingerbread keyboard, uh, but some of the things that they've added is when you type something into it, it underlines misspelled words. You can tap on those and it gives you a bunch of different options uh, to replace it with. Also, uh, voice to text uh, now streams which is pretty cool. So instead of having to wait for it to figure out what you said after you hit stop and then it takes a second and it puts it in, it'll actually do it right away. So you can actually just talk, um, even pause, stop talking completely, or keep talking and see how much of your sentence it can get. It isn't perfect, as you can 
by it using the words it isn't too bad. Now we have uh, a data counter which has been added. You can get to it by going to settings from the notification bar and you'll see data usage. Now this will actually tell you how much data you've used, what apps are using the most data, uh, and you can even set a mobile data limit. So at two gigs, it'll warn you. It's something, whatever you want to set it at, it'll actually stop mobile data altogether, etc. cetera. Uh, so this obviously comes in handy with any data plan on any of the carriers, because all of them have some type of uh, limit or something where they throttle your speed or you get charged overages or something like that. Next up is the camera, which loads uh, a lot faster than it used to, uh, and also has an instant shutter, which means you can just keep tapping this and it keeps taking pictures. You can see it took all those pictures. Besides that, the device itself has NFC built in um, and Ice Cream Sandwich uh, has been able to take advantage of NFC a little bit better than the old versions of Android using Android Beam. What this does is if you have two NFC Ice Cream Sandwich enabled devices, uh, you can enable Android Beam tap them together and then use that to share pictures, apps, videos, files, etc. Uh, so it's kind of like a cool way of doing a Bluetooth file transfer, just a lot easier. Uh, also, the NFC can be used for Google Wallet, which is kind of a, um, basically it's a wallet that Google has created uh, where you can store some card information and then use the NFC in the device to pay at different stores in certain areas that have uh, a pay pass is what they're called, um, where you just tap it on the register and it automatically deducts your card, which is kind of cool. That feature is still coming to this current device. Uh, we have a way of getting it on the device if you check out our site and click on how to, but uh, eventually Google will be bringing that officially to Ice Cream Sandwich as well. Okay, next up, we'll talk about the browsing. So, uh, something that is cool is it will automatically sync your browser with your Google Chrome browser, so long as you link your Google accounts. So that means that any, uh, any bookmarks that you have in your Google Chrome will also show up here. And you can see that you have your linked account there and then local bookmarks on the actual device. Something else you can do is you can now also tap up here and hit request desktop site and uh, have it automatically give you the desktop version of the site instead of the mobile version. Finally, within the browser itself, you can actually create multiple tabs and get rid of them now by swiping. And last but not least, uh, Google finally added the ability to screen capture directly into Android. Uh, without requiring root access or anything like that. So we can click on any screen that we want and hold down the volume down and the power button at the same time. And it'll automatically save our screenshot. We can then get to our screenshot in the gallery and we can also share it uh, in any of the normal ways. And there you have it, our complete walkthrough of Ice Cream Sandwich, AKA Android 4.0. Uh, feel free to head to our site after this and check out some of our other videos we've done recently, including a review itself, uh, some how-tos on how to get, say, Google Wallet on the Galaxy Nexus, uh, and also custom ROMs that we have uh, in our ROM repository. Uh, and that's it, hope you enjoyed.